Good morning and welcome back to another video here from the off grid garage in sunny hot Australia. And it's not that hot, but it is super sunny. There are no clouds, not yet, nothing. Perfect solar weather, you would think. Pure sunshine. Actually not. I like it if it's cloudy. A cloudy sky increases my solar production by 50% here in the off-grid garage. Because at the moment it's all shading, the trees are blocking the sun from the garage roof. But if you have a bit of clouds, they actually reflecting and harmonize the light from everywhere. And I have far more output. But it is what it is. Guys, you have seen it. I have prepared our Franken battery. Today we want to start with a build and I'm really trying yeah, we had some celebrations last night. That's probably a leftover. <laughs> and I'm trying to keep these videos a bit shorter here and post more often so we can get more feedback from the community. How I should build these, what I should do, what I did wrong. What are your thoughts about this Frankenstein battery we are going to build? So let's get into it right away. I'm going to unbox this um, Seplos battery pack here. It's the Mason 280 amp hour kit. Link is under the video description as always. I have already one in use of them. Brilliant, perfect, best do-it-yourself cases ever so far. If you want to see the detailed and comprehensive unboxing of this kit, um, I'll link this video down in the description as well. Are you a bit dizzy now? Okay, so this is how the Seplos box looks from the inside. They have now put all the accessories in a cardboard box as the community have suggested. We've got our stack of EVA tapes here for in between the battery cells. Our PCBs, which we don't use right now because we want to test another BMS or another two BMSs actually. We've got these isolator plates in here and of course the BMS down there. This is a 200 amp, 48 volt, 200 amp. 10e BMS with Bluetooth but I have seen the actual display has no Bluetooth module so this is the normal so even if it is a 10e BMS it has no Bluetooth capability yet but yes I have let me show you quickly you can actually buy these displays separately and then you have the Bluetooth, geez. there's the Bluetooth module, see this one, now you can see it, left Bluetooth, right, no Bluetooth. So I link this down below as well here if you're interested, but they only work with the 10E BMS of Zeplos, not with the 10C, any older 10D or something, no, 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 it needs to be the 10E BMS, not a newer version of the BMS, and then you can just upgrade it with such a display if the BMS does not come with Bluetooth already. So before you buy this one, check your BMS if you have this Bluetooth chip here on the back side of the PCB of the display. If not, this is the upgrade you want. It's about uh, $46 or something Australian, including shipping, link down below. I'm just deciding if I should put the battery box on the workbench and then we work over there with the batteries or if I should leave it on the trolley so we can wheel it around because we need to connect it to the um, Powerball 2 at some stage to do charging and discharging tests and everything. So I think I leave it on the trolley and we work here on the floor. Ah. Even I have something now to lift up these heavy batteries here from the workbench on the trolley on top of each other. I'll show you later what I have. Now, first of all, thank you very much for all your 250, 300, 350 comments on the Frankenstein battery video last week. Some very good, some very crazy ideas. And yeah, while it is a fun project, we want to get something out of it. We want to learn from what we are doing here. Mixing up all these batteries, different ages, different capacities, different terminals, and trying to make a Frankenstein battery out of that and put this all in a Zeplos box and later use the battery and see how it performs on a day-to-day -day usage. See the Hythium batteries, they are really, really bloated for some reason. I don't know why. And it's more like in the, in the middle area actually. 
I'm not sure what's going on here with these batteries, huh? So it will be very hard to compress them actually. Mild compression, mild compression it does. The oldies here, they are actually not too bad. They are a bit bloated, but I mean, they were in the SFK battery box. Can't see any issues there. Then we've got the wrapped. They are obviously certified cells and I have used them only once. So they fit perfectly together. The same as the EVE. They are a bit more bloated than the wrapped. That's interesting finding. And then we have the 280 ampere hour EVE cells here. They should be all fairly flat as well. So the only concern is actually the Hythium batteries here, which are a bit belly, which are a bit pregnant. Just trying to find the right order to put them in there because we've got two rows, eight batteries each. And I want to make sure the two rows, eight batteries each will have the same depth eventually. Otherwise it will be a bit hard with a compression plate then to push them into the case. So I guess we um, put them just into the case now and move them around and see what combination is the best. I think I want to start with the wrapped 280 cells because they are absolutely flat. They've got no belly, no swelling at all. So we put these ones on the outside on the left channel. They are start with the two wrapped cells. Then I will have my four problem charts here, the Hythium cells, which are super swollen, but not where the electrodes are, just in the middle for some reason. That is really a weird... Anyway, and then we will have the two EVE LF304 cells because they are not swollen either. They are fairly flat. So these four are compensating for these four cells here as well. And on the other side, we're using the 304 ampere hours, the oldies, plus the 280 ampere hour here from Volta Energy. Well, we have to start somewhere. All right, we are all in. So I have pushed them all to the end now. And we can already see that this row, that this row is a bit longer than this one here by exactly 63.7 over here we have 63.9 so it's around two maybe three millimeter difference it's not that bad but maybe I can have two of the hythium cells on this side and the other two on this side so here at the far end 76 this is even worse now ah, now that's not good okay this uh, turns out to be far more difficult than i actually thought so i have the two rows now ready and we have the same width or depth whatever you want to call it up to half a millimeter this is how good I can do it at the moment. It can already make a difference if you just swap two cells in the position. Because then the shape of one cell fits exactly into the shape of the other cell, like a puzzle. But if you swap them, they may not fit as good. And I haven't even put them in the right order, so positive-negative needs to alternate. And I also have three Hythium cells on this side. There's only one over here. I've got three of the oldies here. One is over there. Someone said this in the comments and said, well, mix them all up as they come. And I thought, nah, that's a bad idea because we are really having trouble to identify them later on in the BMS. We always need a table then to tell us, okay, cell number 11 is this one and cell number nine is this one. I wanted to have them in a certain order so I can actually remember, okay, these ones come first, then the oldies, then the hythium, and then the other two. But I don't think this is possible. My friends, the luck is on our side. I have now installed all the batteries in the correct order as per this um, sheet here. So this is to ensure that the Seplos BMS fits eventually then. Main negative over here, main positive on this side. And we have exactly 63.8. And here we have exactly 63.8. <laughs> It's a good start. It's a good start. I know I haven't put any EVA foam in between, but it doesn't really matter because this will push the cells in the same distance apart. So here on the left, we've got the terminals all pushed apart, apart from the last one. See, this is an older cell. Then we start with the three old ones here. 
and then we go white again and then we have these new terminals here so we need to geez this will be a challenge in itself to uh, get all these bus bars right should be fairly easy across here but this one here mm, i'm not so sure yet we probably have to use some of maddie's flexible bus bars here So this is pretty much the um, variety of bus bars I have available right now to make it work. Hey, we have got one um, Ziploss um, bus bar here, the aluminium ones. They actually fit pretty well. Even here on the swollen hythium cells, they fit and have some play. Ooh, I like this idea. Definitely too short here. Yeah, they pretty much fit everywhere. And we still got like 15, 16 of them in the original Zeblos box over there. But I probably don't want to use them. We want to be a bit more zombie-like and use any kind of these ones. I probably even go with the aluminium bus bars for these double pole cells. Like this. Huh? What do you think? So we need to find some sort of... Yeah, well, this is definitely on an angle here. I either have to bend it, hashtag bend it, or use a flexible bus bar like this. Yep, they would fit nicely. And I'll probably use one of these over here as our bridge, not just the other way around. This spans across the two rows. All these ones are simple. You can just use these ones here. They fit perfectly across. Oh, oh, oh. Depending where it goes. It's not going to fit here. Look at this. Oh, my God. Ah. Yeah, well, we have to compress the cells first and then see what actually fits. I think we can make it work with these sort of bus bars here and connect these cells somehow. It'll be wild. I must say... Looking at all these battery cells here, I think the Ruipu, Ruipu Rept 280 are the best ones considering the shape because they are 100% flat, there's no swelling, there's no bulging, nothing. Even I have cycled them a few times as well to measure the capacities. But I did the same with the EVE cells and the EVE cells, they tend to swell a bit easier, a bit earlier. None of these cells were compressed while testing. But the wrapped battery is actually stayed in shape. So we now put this whole stack of EVA tape, sticky foam as I refer to it, in between each of the cells. And this sticky foam here helps out to smooth your battery surfaces. So if your batteries are a bit swollen, a bit uneven, this one helps but still keeps the compression up. All right, so I have now installed the EVA tape in between all the battery cells, but this is still totally uncompressed. And the next step would be to mount the uh, compression plate here at the front. Well, this will be quite a challenge here because you can see the bracket here where the compression plate sits against. And this is good 10 millimeters now, which I need to compress to make this work. I probably don't go all the way in with the compression. That is probably a bit too much. I um, I definitely need these longer screws now. I think they are in the box. Look at this gap. Actually, see anything here? This is how far we need to compress. That looks good. Oh. 
even these ones are a bit short. Okay, I've got one in just. Maybe I can compress it a bit so. Yes, I think we've got a win here. They are just long enough, just. Okay, I've got all seven screws in the compression plate and now it's time to screw them in. All right, we are all the way in. Can't believe we made it actually. What I found um, a bit strange is, look at these gaps. This is a bit wider here than on this side. So it looks like this side is further compressed than the other one. Because this one has uh, three hythium cells and this one has only one. So I assume but the gap is pretty wide in here and very small in here. I don't know. Well, they are all in. They are all compressed. I, I tried with a torque wrench to get an even torque on this compression plate here, but I had to go around in circles all the time until the plate was fully in anyway. The only thing I can see is here, look at this, how this is bended. And the other side, not so much, just a tiny bit. But this was the same with the um, first mason I've built as well. That's the same thickness of material here we have and they just bend around. Anyway, this is what we do. It's all compressed now. Holy crap. <laughs> oh, no. 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 Oh, even they don't line up anymore. Look at this. Look at these holes, they're not lining up anymore. See the offset? That's because of the EVA foam. These ones are not made for having foam in between the batteries. They are for pure compression with one of these epoxy boards in between maybe which does not compress at all, but here we have some sort of... Maybe you should go for the for the flexible bus bars everywhere. Because these cells, they can actually move with the foam in between a bit. Well, Medi has definitely sent enough of them. I've got, I've got one over here, where is it? Ah, this one here. This one doesn't move left and right anymore. It is very tight, so I would really replace this one with a flexible one, flexible bus bar as well, just to be sure. Maybe we should go all flexible, what do you think? I'll leave this for next time. Leave your comments down below. And here we've got some space. That is all good. Ah, here are, again, very, very tight. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Ah. Oh, I've got only two left, Medi. Yeah, I've got three left, but four bus bars to replace. Maybe we leave these ones as they are because these are the super flat cells and I'm not expecting them to get pregnant very soon. Anyway, guys, I want to keep the videos a bit shorter, as I said, because I want to get your feedback on this one here. So let me know in the comments down below what you think about the Frankenstein battery. Fully compressed here. I hope it all goes well. And in the next video, I want to connect the BMS to this battery here. And then we can already have a, a view on these individual cells. I have pre-charged all the cells to 3.45 volts, but not in parallel. This were all separate. So they should have roughly the same state of charge, but there could be still a lot of balancing happening as well. Ah, talking about the balancer. Should we use a 16S capacitive balancer or should we go for the knee? 
the, the knee, the knee, the knee, I mean the knee active balancer. I still got generation two and generation four here. So we can have the choice. I definitely want to connect an active balancer to this battery. Just in case, just in case. Maybe we don't need it. All right, guys, leave all your comments down below, all your thoughts about the Franken battery. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your great support here on the channel. All these beautiful people out there who have donated to the channel, keeping the show up and running. And until the next video, when we install the VMS on this battery, you stay charged, stay safe. And thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye bye. It's almost alive.